Hello everyone, and welcome to part two of the... Oh my god, I was just talking. Shut the fuck up. Um, part two of the Office Complex Let's Play, I think it's part two. Anyway, um, Office Complex is the... Oh god. First we have the first, then Unforeseen Consequences. Uh, anonymous Materials of the fourth, fourth chapter of Half-Life 1. Um, so, I got these two Barneys with me. Oops. Let's see how far we can bring them. And this area is infamous for its excessive use of alien slaves. So we're going to be seeing a lot of them in, uh, in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, that's why I brought my Barneys. They shoot everything. They even shoot me sometimes, which is fantastic. Alright, good sequence coming up. Yeah, that's awesome. Gibbs! Yeah, anyway, so those scientists suck. And uh, we'll just head on out here. See what we can see. Alright, get ready for fun. Go, Barneys! Kill all of them. Oops, shit. Good job, dudes. We'll go exploring. Ah, burning gun my way. So the thing about alien slaves is, uh, like I said before, the beauty of them is that you can dodge their attacks just by side strafing out of the way, and you guys are definitely in the way. Oh, fuck this. This is why I usually don't bring Barneys with me throughout this game. <laughs> no, we're certainly not. Okay, why not? There we go. Okay, you're sort of out of the way, right? Yeah. There we go. Alright. We're out. Just exploring around. This loops back this way. There's another one there. This is health kit. You guys better not get in my way again. Oh, fuck's sake. Ah! Okay. There's a scientist in here. Hello. I'm not so sure I want to go to the surface. What if the world finds out what we were doing down here? Oh! <laughs> so he's supposed to be standing here, and uh, he says that when you approach him. This is cool. You can uh, break these filing cabinets, usually mess them up, even get rid of their sides. It's cool. It's cool how so many things are actually destructible. Is this destructible? No. Alright, so we're gonna keep adding to the exit, which is through here. Yeah, that's not a trap. I always found this alien slave a little bit silly, because you can see him. So you can just sort of do one of these. But, I mean, it's obviously easier to just go wha-bam with a double shot. Same with this guy. Wha-bam. And that's how awesome the double shot on the shotgun is. Um, it is by far the best. Uh, I'm going to turn this down a little bit. But it's by far the best. Actually, it's already pretty much down. By far the best weapon in, uh, in Half-Life 1. We got a scientist here. Take that out. Hello. I just want to hear this is pure access transmission. Soldiers have arrived and they're coming to rescue us. Of course, I have my doubts that we'll live long enough to greet them. Okay, so we start to really get a sense now in the game that um, that of course soldiers are coming to get rescue us, and those who've played it know that. Um, Can't get any worse than this. Can it? Know that the soldiers are definitely not a good thing. Okay, so I'm gonna tell this this Barney to wait. Because there's a trap up ahead. This uh, auto turret activates through the glass. Now you can actually the easiest way to do this is to just uh, you are so loud. The easiest way to do this is to just snipe it with the pistol because the pistol's so damn accurate and awesome in this game. But uh, the cool way to do it is of course just lob a grenade up there like that. Oh, it didn't kill it. There we go. That's a cool way of doing it. Oop. Oh, shit. That hurt. 
Now I can bring the Bernie. I mean, you, you could use the explosive box to kill that zombie, but I'm lazy and impatient, and I'm not going to bother juggling these Barneys. You get the idea. You can bring them fire. Get top side. I hear troops are coming in to save us. All right, so even more confirmation that there are there is some sort of military coming in. So if you head this way, try to get in this door. You can't. Then try to shoot it. Still can't get in. Um. So the way we have to go is through these vents which is actually a really cool side area this is probably one of my favorite side areas in Half-Life 1 that a lot of people don't care to visit and by side area I mean area that you don't have to traverse to beat the game I really like sort of like the puzzle elements in this sort of like there's jumping puzzles and it's just really simple things obviously in today's standards but uh just something to break up the gameplay. Get out of the way, corpse. And this is where those two aliens were that we killed, if you remember. So we're just sort of backtracking a little bit, going through the vents. And we get to see the areas that we've already visited. So, um, for example, I think this is where the, the, the Barney's just up here, where we entered these vents. It's just up there. <laughs> I'll just leave. Kill those. Ah! We'll kill those guys later. So this is all secondary. Like you don't have to come this way. So it's a pretty lengthy little area for for like a secret secret-ish area, I guess. And then of course, when you step here, we're in the room that we were trying to get to. So awesome! We get grenades. Um, you didn't, I don't think you saw it, but there was a shotgun here with some ammo, which I picked up, and some health. So, overall pretty cool area, and then you can just casually open that door. Um, so, there's that bit. If we head, head back down to the Barney, we can come down here. If you remember, that's where we were up there. Kill those full squid. Grab all the wonderful goodies that are down here. All right, now we can bring Barney with us. Okay, we might live longer if we work together. Come on, Barney. This is like the zombie room. This Barney's really good at shooting stuff in here. Okay, you're not gonna shoot? There we go. Come on, dude. Get closer. It's funny, because the Barney will look at you while he's just shooting. <laughs> um, so this door is locked. We can't get through here, unfortunately. Now, you can actually glitch this area. Um, you can get the Barney. I think it's this door. You can get him to sort of open this door, I think, somehow. I'm not sure how to do it. I've seen... There we go. Yeah, so you can totally glitch this area and uh, skip the whole bit up uh, below. Or, sorry, skip the whole bit coming up. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to do this properly. And I think okay, I... I'll see. I think I got my Barney stuck. Yeah, I got my Barney stuck. So, oh, why did I kill you? There we go. I'm gonna take your gun. So yeah, the door's totally glitched out, and uh, we can shortcut that. But we're not gonna do that because we're doing a proper let's play. Keep playing this legitimately.
So we're about to enter the freezer area. Oh man, this music is so loud. I'm sorry, guys. Um, we're about to we're about to enter the freezer area where there's lots of puzzles. It's actually a pretty cool, nifty little area. Um, and I think this is our first encounter with uh, different surface textures. This, of course, is ice. I'm not f holding forward. You just sort of run into it and you slide across. Um, you'll see it a lot more later. Um, so the freezer air area contains a whole bunch of crates that gib into awesome pieces and a whole bunch of horrors and things that can kill you. So if we head this way... So this this scientist basically runs away. If you save him, he'll say this. Alright, actually, um, he doesn't say anything specific. It's just random things that he says, but... You can save him, which is always nice to do. We'll explore, explore these rooms. And uh, there's some pistol ammo here. Do we need more pistol ammo? Yeah. And a grenade, of course, if you need a grenade. They really like hiding bull squids behind crates in Half-Life 1. Okay, so if we activate this lever, lever, whatever, um, it'll activate this platform which moves these crates, which we'll use in a second. So we'll head back. Ow. If we head back to the beginning, let's remember this is where the door was, we can climb up this ladder, head through the vents. So now we're experiencing the freezer in uh, in a more vertical area, which is really cool. So, so like, you explore the area um, on the surface and on the ground, and then you get to go through it all again and in a different perspective, which is what Valve is really good at, and which is a sign of a, of a really good FPS. So if we head back here, we can finally cross this bit. Just wait for it to come by. Shoot the boxes in the meantime. Get all the power modules. There's a head crab right down here. This is where that dead Barney was. We can get more power. I like this bit, the death vents, as I like to call them. Um, this is a really spooky area. It's, I like the. I really enjoy the lighting here, like the red and green sort of, uh, or red and aqua, I guess if you can call it that, lighting with all the. Uh, bones and blood sprites and cockroaches and barnacles. I just really think this area is really well done. Even though it's just so simple, it's just a whole bunch of rectangles and everything. Um, even like the textures are all fucked up, but I think it's just a really great area to just look at. It's like an area of Black Mesa that nobody has ever visited before. <laughs> um, except for these dead guys, I guess. So we'll just kill off these barnacles. Grab the power module. Head out. Damn it. I really like using the shotgun. And you can see this is uh, this is where we were where we glitched the door out. So we basically made a, a big loop. So you could skip that whole map um, basically um, by using the Barney. There's a scientist here that runs away. You save him by killing the the zombie. Um, there's a Barney here who dies. Us down here. Head for the surface. Elevators are out of order, but we can still climb. That's right. Barney's got good initiative. He's always positive, happy-go-lucky. There's a resonance cascade. The world is ending, but the, the Barneys are like, "Yeah, this is fucking awesome." 
They're they're great characters. All right, so G-Man sighting. Oh, oh, I want to make the G-Man sighting. Okay, G-Man sighting here. Hello, Mr. G-Man. Goodbye. Where's my Barney? He's supposed to fucking protect me. In just a few seconds, we're gonna see a really awesome sequence. Um, so I'm just gonna shut up and let you watch it. Breaking. So basically there's a lot going on all at once. Uh, you got the scientist jumping out of the window and doing an awesome combat roll. <laughs> and then uh, this this zombie sort of crashing through this glass pane and hitting the ground with a blood spray. And then this zombie breaking out of this room over to the side. So like you're getting so much information all at once being just thrown at you uh, by the game. And and the the funniest bit is just this scientist because the scientist doesn't know doesn't know what look at that what the fuck to say um, most of all this like he'll jump out of here and he'll say greetings like like him jumping out of a <laughs> old paned window um, doesn't phase him anyway um, so that's that's a whole sequence it's like the final sequence or the second penultimate animation in uh, Office Complex. We'll just explore all these areas now that we've gone through it. There's some grenades in here. Um, and uh, and as the Barney alluded, the elevators are out. Um, so we're gonna have to climb. And this, this, little, this little jump actually gets a lot of people. I find a lot of people quit at Half-Life 1 uh, when they try to do this jump. There's like no sprinting, obviously, and we can't we can't use the jump module because we don't have it. And it's quite a it's quite a hard jump. Uh, and the reason for that is because when you hit when you jump and grab onto the uh, the ladder, if you're holding the space key, which is the jump key, you'll fall off um, the ladder or you'll push yourself off. So what you basically have to do is you have to do a long a jump and then just tap the space key in and run into the ladder. You can't hold the space key, which a lot of people seem to do, and that's where that's why a lot of people fail this jump. Um, so we're gonna try it. I mean, just like that. And as soon as you make the jump, you're forced to look up, and you'll immediately see the scientist who's dangling here um, for his life, which sucks. The other really cool thing is, is uh, the environment sounds. You'll hear that there's like a metal echo in this room. In Half-Life, um, you can actually set in uh, set environmental sounds. It's like ENV environment or something like that, and it dictates um, how everything sounds in that sort of cubular environment. So in here, there's there's probably metal echo or whatever, and it mo the game dynamically modifies all the sounds and everything. Um, to fit that environment. You can even hear the reload. It adds that sort of metal -y echo, which is a really, really neat feature that that games didn't have before it. So you'll hear it everywhere, even like underwater, um, obviously here in uh, computer areas. So, see you later, scientist. And then we have to... This jump is hard, too, because you don't get a lot of room to move on this little platform. So, really, two really difficult parts um, for people who aren't accustomed to FPSs. I don't think it was a really good design decision. Then we get it to the elevator. And if we hit the button... We start We've Got Hostiles. Um, so that's going to be the end of this part of this... Uh, this let's play and in the next episode we'll play through we've got hostiles we'll see some new enemies some new weapons um it'll be really fantastic so uh thank you for watching and i'll see you next time